Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug Facebook page. Hashtag live. You're joining during the 7 o'clock hour Central Standard Time. Hashtag recorded. If you're joining at any other time, hashtag shared. If you'll consider putting this conversation as well as the Pastor Doug page out on your newsfeed. So if your friends or your family like or follow that page, they will get notifications when we go live and they may become part of the Pray First family. Peggy Poff, how are you doing? I'm praying for you and Randy. I hope that he is doing well. Please uh, give us an update. Brandy said that um, she's communicated uh, with you and uh, we are all praying for you. Uh, if you need anything, let us know. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Leanne Godsey. Good morning, Kat Salyas. Good morning, Corrine. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Dustin. Good morning. Hit those hearts. Hit those lights. Go crazy on those. Let all of our first-time guests know that you are glad that they are here. Good morning, Yasser Gill. Well, it's not morning in Pakistan, is it? Hey, Google, what time is it in Pakistan? The time in Pakistan. Good evening. It's 6.01 p.m. in Pakistan. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, Amy Allen. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Barbie Shook. Good morning, Brenda Marcotte. Good morning, Ann Pritchard. Uh, today, we're going to uh, wrap up the conversation about an unteachable spirit in this particular teaching. I'm sure that it will come up forever in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But we'll wrap up this particular teaching. Hi, Daryl Mannon. I'm missing you, buddy. I think you're working a lot. Good morning, Whitley Yon. Good morning, Audra Scott. Good morning, Kelly Saldo. Uh, Neil, Neil Hedges is right. <laughs> if they like or follow the page, they may or may not get notifications. But here's what you can absolutely know. Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock on the Pastor Doug page, we're going live. He's a man, Facebook has become uh, unreliable, but if they're listening to this, Facebook, you are awesome. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, Patty Hagen. Patty, I missed you, Sunday. I didn't get to see you. I'm sorry about that. I've, that means you have to come back sooner or I have to come visit you. Good morning, Gail, Hannah. All right, so let's talk about this. We've been talking about a teachable or an unteachable spirit uh, for, I think, I know all week, maybe last week as well. So go back on the YouTube Pray First channel, Pastor Doug Pray First on YouTube, and all of these conversations are catalog there, and it's easy for you to find. Good morning, Raymond Duffy, the mayor of Maywood. Good morning, Stevie Smith and Barbie and Donald Huddleston Baker. So five root causes. Let's get started because we have some numbers. Uh, this isn't going to take too long, um, but we need to go over these. Uh, God is looking for a teachable spirit. God is looking for someone to use. He's looking for someone to mold. He's looking for someone to pour out his spirit on, in, and through uh, so that other people uh, will be drawn to his love, be drawn to his salvation. So how do we become unteachable? How do we get to a place where we can't be told anything? How do we get to a place where we get so stubborn about certain things that we, uh, we won't even ignore God if he tries to change our mind? We want to make sure that if it's God trying to change us or change our mind or change the way we think, that we don't grow so stubborn that we can't be teachable. A teachable spirit is something of great worth. A teachable spirit is worth more than anything else that you can acquire. The difference between those who succeed and those who fail quite often is not aptitude. It is attitude. So how do we get to a place where we grow um, hard how do we get to a place where we become unteachable? This is, this is the worst one that I can think of. How do we get to a place where we are unusable by the Lord to affect his kingdom in a positive way? Five root causes of an unteachable spirit. Number one is pride. Number one, write these down. Number one is pride. Hashtag pride. Pride is the original sin. You hear about original sin, it's the fall of mankind. Pride is original sin. It is how Lucifer separated himself from God. It is how the worship leader of heaven began to merchandise. That's why Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. First of all, Lucifer was the um, worship leader of heaven. He was created to worship God. He was created that worship would flow through him and to the only one that is worthy of worship, which is God. But what merchandising means 
is that he managed worship for God. Worship was supposed to flow through him to God. He began to keep some of it. He began to pocket some of the proceeds of worship. He began to pocket the profits of worship. He began to take a little bit of that worship and keep it for himself. And he said, I'm going to ascend to the highest mount. I'm going to grow higher. I'm going to be like the Most High God. He kept saying, I'm going to go up, up, up. But in fact, he was uh, cast down, Scripture tells us. Number one, the way we become hard, the way become, we become unteachable is pride, pride being the original sin. And if we don't intentionally deal with pride, um, it's going to very intentionally deal with us. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, not to God's way. Listen, let me, let me explain to you who deals with pride. Every single one of us, every single one of you, if you are not intentionally dealing with pride, then pride is intentionally dealing with you. Every single human being that breathes has a prideful spirit. And it is what God is working out of us as we mature and as we become teachable, as we become pliable, as he takes that heart of stone out and replaces it with a heart of flesh. How many people have gone astray? All of us. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned. Everyone. Hashtag everyone. This isn't just something that Pastor Doug deals with. This is something that Neil, Stacy, Debbie, Bill, Tasha... Every single one of us have to deal with. We have turned astray, every one, to his own way. And the Lord has laid the iniquity of us all upon him. What's it talking about? Pride is why Jesus died. What is our iniquity? What is our inner sin? Pride. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Why does pride go before destruction? Let me tell you why pride comes before destruction. Pride comes before destruction because pride can't be told anything. Pride can't be stopped. Pride can't be taught. Pride can't be corrected. Pride can't be disciplined. Why does pride come before destruction? Because you can't tell it anything. It thinks it's right. It thinks its way is right, whether it's wrong. James chapter 4, verse 6 says this, But he gives more grace. Just imagine this. It's one thing that God gives grace, but wouldn't that be even better if he gave more grace? He gives more grace. Therefore, he says that God resists the proud. That's what happened to Lucifer. God resisted him. Lucifer became proud and God resisted him. God gives, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Everybody hashtag resists. Listen to this. Resist in this verse literally means to set yourself in battle formation against. God resists the proud. The word resist here literally means to set yourself in battle formation against. Let me read this the way it actually literally means. God sets himself in battle formation against the proud, but he fights with and for the humble. I want to read that one more time, okay? It's, that's such a great verse, unless you're proud. God sets himself in battle formation against the proud. But God fights for and God fights with the humble. Listen, can you imagine thinking that you will be victorious when it is God who is your adversary? That God has set himself against you? God sets himself against unteachable spirits. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It means that God provides resistance to you. He sets himself, it's the same word he set, uses when he says uh, to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist the devil doesn't mean ignore the devil. Resist the devil doesn't mean uh, to uh, 
shy away from the devil or look away from the devil. Resist the devil means set yourself in battle position against the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is the same verse, but he's saying that when you're proud, I set myself against you and you, and you won't win that. And, and God's love is still there. His love is still available. He, he always loves us. But when we walk in pride, God's attitude is this. You have zero chance of being successful. So I'm going to stop you. God's, God's attitude towards the proud is you have zero percent chance of being successful, so I'm going to resist you. I'm going to set myself against you. I am going to stop you. The person who loves you is not the one who will let you walk off a cliff. The person who loves you is the one who will get between you and the cliff, cliff and resist you and set themselves against you and try to slow you or try to stop you. The one who loves you is the one who's willing to stand between you and the cliff that you're about to fall over. And, and if losing your friendship is required, friendship be lost, I want to save your life. I want to tell you the truth. Listen, it's more important for me to tell you what you need to hear than for me to say what I want to say. It's, it's much more important for us to tell people what they need to hear than it is for me to say simply what I want to say. Because it's not about me. It's about you. God gives grace to the humble. The humble are those who say, I don't know what to do. I don't know if this is right. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can stop. I don't know if I can get over this. I don't know if... I'll succeed, but I need help. I need help. Brandy brings up a good point. Say with love. Let me tell you something. Don't dress the truth up in love, or don't dress a lie up, or don't dress a, I was afraid to tell you this up, or I'm going to sugarcoat this up for you. Sometimes love will slap you right in the mouth. <laughs> Sometimes love will grab you and shake you. Sometimes love comes in discipline, correction. Scripture says that the Lord corrects those whom he loves. So be sure that when you receive or when you give correction, that it has nothing to do with you and that you are willing to do whatever it takes to stop someone for going off the cliff. I, I, I dealt with this recently. I did not know how far to resist some friends of mine in something they were doing because I wanted to, I, I didn't feel, I, I didn't have counsel for that. I, I didn't know how far to go with that. I'm learning that. Why? Because I'm dealing with pride. I didn't want to say anything to them that would cause them to dislike me. I didn't want to say anything to them that would cause them to think that I think I'm better than them. All these reasons that I didn't want to help them. So God gives grace, fights for and fights with the humble. Here's the second root cause, and I've got to get through these. The second root cause of an unteachable spirit is, number two, rebellion and independence. Rebellion. Rebellion against authority. Uh, independence not being dependent upon God or anyone else. Most of the instruction that we're going to receive in our lives comes from people who are in authority. And most of the time, those we rebel against are people in authority. Therefore, we do not receive their instruction. Therefore, we become unteachable. People who are rebellious are always unteachable. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submit to one another in the fear of God. Now, he's talking about married couples. 
So have you ever seen a man who just lords himself over their family? I'm not talking about protects his family. I'm not talking about being a covering. I'm not talking about being the head of households. Men, you are the head of the household. That means you are the covering. That means you are the authority. That means you are the protector. That means when something hits, it should hit you first. That doesn't mean that we are dictators in the home. Have you ever seen a woman who ran the house? And you hear this phrase, she wears the britches in that family, or we know who wears the britches in that family. And, and when God speaks to a couple, that's not how he talks. God says that you are to be mutually submissive to one another. You are both equal parts. Husband, be the head of the house, be the covering of the house, protector of the house, but you're not Lord. And it doesn't just mean to uh, your spouse. You can also understand this to mean submit to one another. I'm hearing a lot of people say right now that I'm going to follow God and not man. But God has placed us under the authority of man, and we're going to follow both. God has given us government. God has given us authority. There is no authority that has not been given by God, Scripture says. There is no government in place that was not placed there by God. There is no authority that was not placed there by God. When it comes to uh, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets, that is Jesus' um, authority structure that he has given to the church. I'm not going to listen to any of them. I'm not going to listen to the pastor. I'm not going to listen to the teacher, the evangelist. The, anything else, I'm going to hear my own spoken word of God. I don't care how it contradicts the word that says that God gave us man to follow, that Paul says, follow me in the same way I follow Christ, that God says, be mutual submissive to your spouse, to your husband and your wife, that God says that we are to follow the government, that we are to follow the leaders that he's put in place. Listen, Pride is something that you are not mutually exclusive from following the scripture and the word of God for your life. He provides those things for your protection and for mine. We don't get to decide, I don't agree with the old goat. We're saying in those ways, you know, and look, if they're contradicting the word of God, that's one thing. But if they're just offending you with the truth, that's quite another. It's quite another. Number three, so the five root causes of an unteachable spirit, pride, rebellion, independence. Number three, insecurity. Insecurity. Insecurity means uncertainty or anxiety about oneself, lack of confidence. I'm telling you what, most of the, mo many, many, let's use these words right, many of the loudest, bullyingest people you know are not secure or confident, they are insecure and unconfident. Yes, most of them. Most of them you know. Insecurity about themselves, uncertainty about themselves, anxiety about oneself, a lack of confidence. One of the best ways you know when someone is insecure is how defensive they get and how stonewalling they get. We're not gonna talk about that no more. Or you're always trying to get me. You know, insecurity. Insecurity can dress up like confidence. But when someone is confident, they don't have to tell you how great they are. Woo. Listen. Conceit is your need for everyone to know how great you are. Confidence Confidence is you don't need anybody to know that. You can be wrong. You can be right. You can be wrong. You can miss it. Insecurity says, I have to be right all the time because I'm right. Insecurity. Number four, four of five root causes of the unteachable spirit is foolishness. Foolishness. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child but the rod of correction will drive it far from them. Why is foolishness bound up in the heart of the child? Why are children born unteachable? Why are children born prideful? Because pride, an unteachable spirit, is original sin. Why do children rebel? Why must they be corrected? 
Why do they treat each other so poorly? Why do they get so angry? Why do they get so defensive? How do they know everything at three years old? Have you ever seen how teenagers and young children, you tell them something, you correct them, and they say, I know that. I know that. I know. Have you ever had a child tell you, I know? Or you had a teenager tell you, I know. And you're sitting there thinking, you don't know. That's why I'm telling you. You don't know. You don't know something just because you think something. You don't know something because you have 15 minutes experience. You don't know. Listen, foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child. Pride is bound up in the heart of the child. The I know, I know, I know. You don't have to tell me that. I know that. But you know, it doesn't just stop with children, does it? It doesn't just stop with teenagers, does it? Foolishness is bound up. But the rod of correction being able to receive correction, being able to receive discipline, being able to receive that makes you not foolish but wise. Number five. So we're talking about the five characteristics of unteachable spirit, pride, rebellion, insecurity. Number five is laziness. Laziness. Lazy people think they're smarter than everybody else, but they're the biggest fools of all. If you are lazy, you are a fool. You think you know everything. You think you don't have to contribute. You think you don't have to do anything. You think you can just rest, relax, and, and, and eat grapes or something. You don't, you don't contribute. You don't participate. You don't serve. You're just lazy. This is one of the five root causes of unteachable spirit. Proverbs 26, verse 16. The lazy man is wise... In his own eyes. It doesn't just use the word wise. It actually uses the word wiser. The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. The lazy man thinks he's wiser than seven other men who can answer sensibly. Have you ever heard someone talk and you just thought, man, I only thought they were a fool but then they opened their mouth and released all doubt. They're a fool. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever thought so you, they were quiet and you thought, well, you know, okay, okay. But then they started talking and you were like, goodness gracious, shut your mouth. Your brain's leaking out. You're showing everybody your, your uh, you're just, oh, bleh. Laziness. All lazy people are unteachable, but they think they're smarter than everybody else. All right, let's, let's move on. Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Success comes to the diligent. Success comes to the wise. Success comes to the correctable. Success comes to those who receive discipline. Success comes to the one who is not lazy. Success comes to the humble. Success comes to the dependent on God. Success and blessing is, can be summed up in one word, diligence. Now let me give you, that's all the negative things, the characteristics that y'all are loving, talking about open your mouth and releasing all doubt, aren't you? Um, that's the five root causes of unteachable. Let me give you the four characteristics of a teachable spirit just really fast. Four characteristics of a teachable spirit. Number one is humility humility. Number two, accepting correction and input. A person who is teachable is humble. A person who is teachable is gracious in accepting correction and input. Number three, a gracious person, a, a teachable person seeks wise counsel in times of decisions, difficulty, or failure. Proverbs 15, 22 says, without counsel, plans go awry, but in a multitude of counselors, thoughts are established. Uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8, Do not rebuke a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, he'll love you all the more. And number four, submitting to authority and staying accountable. So let me give you those again, just real quickly. The characteristics of a teachable spirit is humility, number one. Number two, gracious, graciously accepting correction or input. Number three, seeking wise counsel. Number four, submitting to authority and staying accountable. One last time because I know I'm reading them fast. He humble. Number one is humility. Number two is graciously accepting correction or input. Number three, seeking wise counsel. Number four, submitting to authority.
Now, let me tell you this. Um, I struggle uh, with pride. I, and when I say I struggle, I mean I have to literally, intentionally disagree with myself from time to time. When I say I struggle with pride, I mean I literally and I intentionally have to embrace that there's a tension between what I think is right and what God's Word says is right. When I say I struggle with pride, I mean on a daily basis, I have to cool my jets down because my pride gets angry or my pride gets offended or my pride gets questioned or my pride gets corrected or my pride receives input. I have to daily, listen, I'm not going to ever be without this part of me that I do not love. So I have to wrestle it. I have to struggle with it. I have to fight it. I have to make decisions that are based on truth and not what I think. I have to tell people what is true and not just what I want them to hear. I have to make decisions based on what's best for others, even if it's not best for me. I have to make decisions based on what's best for others, even if it's not best for me. Pride says, don't give yourself up. Don't put yourself out there. Don't offend them. Don't hurt their feelings. Don't, don't say something that would make them angry, upset, or mad. Don't, don't, because what we're talking to is not, we're talking to the pride in them. Scripture says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yeah, a lot of times. Because prideful people can't take input, can't take correction, can't, can't, can't take their selves being questioned. I'm telling you right now, if you want to be used in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to deal every day in every circumstance and every situation with pride and understand you're not going to win every battle and you're going to try to beat yourself up and you're going to condemn yourself, and you're going to you're going to feel bad about yourself, and you're going to think, well, this just isn't worth it. It is worth it to fight, wrestle, struggle against the inner pride that's bound up inside of us, because love never fails. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person listening and every person watching, and especially those who do not think they deal with pride. Though your scripture says it's bound up in every single one of us. In that way, they're unteachable. They don't even recognize that they might possibly have pride. Father, I pray that you would remove the blinders, that you would illuminate the blind spot. Because if they don't know they deal with pride, they will not realize why you're resisting them. If they don't know they deal with pride, they won't understand why you've set yourself in battle formation against them. If they don't know they have or are dealing with pride, they don't even realize that you're not giving them grace, that you give grace to the humble, but that you've resisted them. Heavenly Father, I pray that no one in this room ever spends a moment in thought that they don't have to deal with pride or that they're not prideful because we all are. We all are. And Father, until you come back and make all things new, and that includes my soul and my body, I'm going to struggle. Love on us, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 <laughs> <clears throat> Look, the older I get, the more I see how broken I really am. And the older I get, the more I see how good God really is. I'll see you guys later this weekend, the conclusion of the series here in God. And then we're going to uh, start a brand new series. Woo! My goodness. Anyway, I got to go. I love y'all. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.